All right, as promised, here's another update of the FJ62 uh, project. Um, doesn't look like a lot of progress has been made, but there's a lot of work that's been done. If you recall in the first two videos, the first video was a lot of disassembly. The second video, I think I was cutting away stuff. Um, so the, the really the last two weeks of any kind of uh, progress has been made with regards to the actual reconstruction has been all in the rear valence of this. As a quick recap, this truck was hit um, some years ago. I don't know how long ago, but probably 10 years ago. In the uh, rear driver's side corner, it was hit hard enough that the outside skin uh, was replaced. They grafted in a new piece there. But what they didn't do is they didn't repair all the inner um, sheet metal panels. They just left them all twisted up. So there was egress for all kinds of debris and water. <clears throat> this truck came from uh, uh, eastern North Carolina, uh, near the coast, on the coast probably. And so a fair bit of this corrosion is probably due from, I don't know if they drove it on the beach, but there was a, there was sand, definitely sand in the old carpet. You know, not like somebody dumped a sand castle in there, but there was a lot, clearly they were beach people. So I imagine this has been down near the ocean for a while and maybe spray or whatever. The corrosion is for sure worst on the driver's side and it's pretty the worst of it is specifically around where this repair was done um so if you don't if you don't recall that go back and look the probably the first or second video you'll see uh, all that rust so i'm gonna flip over here to the truck now all right so let me just give you a quick refresher on where the rust is the primary part of the rust here is on the driver's side almost all of this is due to the accident I think I mean that up there I can't say for sure but it's pretty bad and it's just on the side where it was repaired Although the graft of the um, panel stops here, I suspect what happened up there is the impact may have pulled apart the, the body sealer, the seam sealer, and let water up in there, and then it just ran its course along the seam. Um, of course, the cutaway here of this uh, behind the wheel quarter panel, that was all gone. I've grafted in a new piece on the inside. I'll go ahead and put some uh, rust converter in there that'll take care of that light surface rust. All the rest of this was gone. I had to cut that away. Beat out the panels on the inside. I mean, that was all this in here was just just smashed. So I had to use a hammer and a dolly. Straighten this out as best I could. Then I had to cut away, if you recall, the entire rear valence side to side. This is the uh, one of the access panels into this rear frame bolt that was gone. Didn't matter because there were holes all over the place back here. So it all just came in here. Then this is a big open channel. It just filled all this up with dirt and debris. And there was about half an inch of crap inside of there. And that was all just holding moisture. So this whole thing was just Swiss cheese metal. I mean, you could push your finger through most of it. Had to cut that away. Grafted in some new pieces here. This is a whole new thing. This part up here was fairly solid, but I had to graft in a, a, a part, a, um, you know, a patch down here. Um, had to take this all the way over because rust got up under this seam so I had to take this all the way over here to the edge until I found some good metal and I just started building back. 
So you can see I'm still reconstructing the valence here. I have to put the weather stripping tab back on. Thankfully I've got a sheet metal brake which makes that job so much easier so I can bend. These are just a couple of alignment uh, tabs so I could keep track of where this is supposed to be. But what I'll do is I'll cut a 24 inch piece, uh, about an inch and a half, bend it, and then tack a, a two foot section in there. Um, had to, having to build the weather stripping back up here. I'll need to put a little filler piece here, tack it in, finish welding that. This is going to have to come out because this has still got some more, so I'm going to cut this piece out. Put another one here. Put that bend in here. Obviously, I saved as bad as it is. Um, I saved the piece that came off because it's pretty... I can't use this piece because you can see they just... They just did a crappy job of, of repairing this. But I get the general consensus of what, you know, this this filler piece needs to be. Sorry, I hope the compressor is not too loud. Um, but I get the general idea what this filler piece needs to be, and I can use this as a template. So when I when I cut some pieces, like I'll probably cut an inch and a half strip here, and then I'll 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 create this curve. Um, and then I'll graft in another piece below that to fill this whole area in. I'll duplicate this uh, arch here, this sheet metal arch. Um, but yeah, I mean, this has turned out to be a lot more work than I initially anticipated. But not really more time, it's just more reconstruction than originally I had thought. I was thinking that this wasn't as bad as it was and then I opened it up and all this down here is in bad shape. Um, but I'm starting to close it up now. So I'll, I'll keep tacking these welds in, welding it in, grinding this edge, getting a nice smooth edge here. Um, then once I have this thing really what I'll do is I'll probably go ahead and finish this off get this kind of constructed and then rehang the door and make sure the door closes appropriately I had to I had to build a, a new bracket in there I had some uh, I don't know like 14 gauge steel and so I just because this was so rusted this was a pressed sheet metal um, bracket spot welded onto the inside of here and that was toast so I had to cut that away build a new bracket welded some nuts on the back side of there with the same thread pitch and just so now you can see uh, maybe you can see kind of how thick the gauge is still that I used but uh so that one's kind of over overkill because I, I have this bracket bent all the way around plus I have another gap filler of the same gauge steel welded to the bottom of that bracket and then that welded to this uh, sheet metal there's a sheet metal seam that comes here underneath anyway <clears throat> over down because I really don't want to cut that open again so yeah that's what I've been doing for the past week that's pretty much all I've been doing for two weeks Oh, I had to cut this out. I'll have to do the same thing on that side, but I had to cut this out, put a patch in there so I could weld something to it because this was all eaten away. Um, you can just see the kind of crappy work that the body shop did. Then they just bonded the hell out of it. And that just made a bad situation worse. Yeah, so a couple times I've reached that point where I'm just like, what in the hell have I done? Why don't I just buy a new tub? But once I get past these really, really awful places, this this looks bad. But if you if you look, this top piece comes down, and this is actually straight. Um, 
it's not as it looks bad I'll cut all this nastiness away um, but it's it's not as curved on this edge as it is up on the very top there's a curve down here that comes down kind of straight so it's not as bad as it is I've saved the uh, rain gutter so I'll be able to recreate the rain gutter um, I put that back on so yeah that's where I'm at it's coming along it's coming along slowly so anybody got any pointers out there anybody want to send prayers my way please do could use it later